This week we're going to start talking about working with sub-procedures, and then we'll go into working with sub-functions. Um, they really aren't called sub-functions, they're just called functions. But essentially what we want to start thinking about is how we can break our program up into logical components, or just pieces, because obviously a large programming problem um, needs to be tackled in a piecewise basis where we we write parts of the program and then bring these parts together to make the whole. I mean, if you just look around you in your life, almost every artifact in your life is simply a, a bunch of pieces brought together to create a single item. And that's the way all programs are written. All computer programs of any sort are essentially many, many hundreds of sub-procedures and or functions that all work together to create the whole. So we're going to start talking about these issues, and we'll talk, start tonight with something fairly simple, and then we'll move on and uh, add some complexity to that. So let's take a look at this example piece of code that I have. Um, I start right out with a sub-procedure that I call main. Now that name is completely made up. It doesn't have to be called main, but it's a nice name because it kind of gives you a sense that this is the main driver of my program. And in this particular example, you'll notice that I've broken the program up into three sub-procedures. The first one is just called print titles. Um, the second one, place random data. And the third one is called calc sums. Now, all of these are very simple just to demonstrate this concept of breaking our program into pieces. Let's go ahead and look at the three parts. Um, this first one, the print titles, simply puts a, a value into cell 1.1. One, one, and then it sets the horizontal alignment of that cell to Excel center, which is a constant that Excel knows about, which will center align horizontally the value. And finally, then we set the column width to 15. The next one um, is the one that places our data. Let's take a look at that one. Essentially, what we're going to do with this one is we're just going to have a little loop that generates a random value and puts it into our cells. So you've seen plenty of for loops that look a lot like this one. Um, we declare some variables, initialize some things. Um, then we have our for loop that goes over this row variable from start row to end row. So essentially, we're going from 2 to 11, so the value for row goes from 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on up to 11. And so in each row in turn, we calculate a random value between 1 and 100 and place it into that cell. Then the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to calculate sums. And, and of course, that's the third procedure that gets called here. And notice these procedure calls. All we have to do is give the name of the procedure. There's nothing mysterious about that. You just say, OK, I want to call that procedure. And, and you give the name, and it goes off and calls it. So let's take a look at calc sums. Again, it's quite straightforward. Calc sums is going to do the same thing that the prior procedure did. Um, but this time, we're going to add up a sum of all the values that we've put into the cells. So we declare that additional variable. We set our starting and end rows. And we set our sum equal to 0. Now, initializing sum to 0 is important because we want to make it crystal clear that we want that sum to start at 0. Now, I know that Visual Basic will automatically initialize that numeric variable to 0. But you want to be clear to someone who's reading your program that sum starts at 0. So if you leave that statement out, it almost seems like you are assuming something, or you're assuming people understand what's going on. So putting this in here is an excellent idea, and I strongly encourage you to initialize your variables, especially if you're going to use them in a situation like you see right here. Now this situation is kind of special, because you'll notice that we are retrieving the first value of sum, adding it to a cell, and then storing it back into sum. So the very first time you do that retrieval, what's in that variable? If you haven't initialized it to 0, you might say to yourself, well, I'm not really sure what's in that variable. Well, we know that Visual Basic actually does initialize to 0, so we can feel pretty confident that there's a 0 in there the first time we retrieve it. But many languages do not do that. And so when you start writing your code, you want to be crystal clear about what's going on. And maybe this program would be moved into another language in the future where that initialization by the language does not take place. And so you explicitly initializing that variable to 0, that's a very important idea. And you should initialize your variables as appropriate to make sure they have a value in there. So let's take a look at what we do. We basically 
go over the rows again from 2 to 12 and we access in turn each cell from 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 and so on to 12 adding it to our sum this is an accumulating sum because if you think about it we go out and get whatever value is in sum add that cell to it and store it back into sum so we come around again we we grab the new value that's in sum add it to the cell and store that whole thing back into sum and we just keep looping over this finally when we we get our sum and we stick it into cell 12 comma 1 and uh, we go ahead and make that bold just to make it stand out a little bit now if you're never sure quite exactly how to do something like this bold all you need to do is record a macro and change a cell to bold and see what the code is that does that. This is exactly what the author was talking about earlier on in the book. So if you're never sure on how to do something, just record a macro doing it and you'll get the, uh, you'll get the macro code and you can take a look at it. So for instance, how did I find out about this column width? Well, I actually Googled it, but I mean, I could have made a macro. How about this horizontal alignment? How did I find that one? Well, I Googled that one too, but all you have to do is record a macro, and you can learn a lot about how to do things in Excel. So I strongly recommend this notion of recording macros to learn how to control a sheet. So again, we're going to run main and it's going to then execute the first procedure and it does it in turn and it goes off and it executes that first procedure and when it hits the end sub of that first procedure it comes back and that's the next statement that gets executed place random data again you can hit F8 to step through your program and watch what it does it'll go off to that next procedure and then it comes back and then it comes back and it does this one and goes off and runs that procedure and then comes back so I'm just gonna go ahead and click in my main procedure here and I'm gonna hit the F5 key and let's go look and see what it does so I hit F5 and on the sheet there's a title there are random numbers and there's my sum at the bottom now there are a couple of things that are not so great about this program and that's where we're gonna go next time on our next video I'll probably do that one tomorrow so don't come back looking for it tonight and you'll notice that in my sub procedures so for instance in my print title sub procedure I have hard coded in my sub procedure that I wanna go into row and column one one here for my title and uh, and then I set the horizontal alignment and the width well, that is always going to do that same cell. That sub procedure always does cells 1, 1. Now, what would be nice is if I could pass to the sub procedure what row and what column I wanted it to use rather than just saying cells 1, 1 every time. And so, this notion of passing arguments or passing values to your sub procedures, that's a very common idea. I mean, for example, if I wanted to put in a sub procedure, I mean, a, a function in my program here, I'd say equals, and I can do rand between. You've all seen the rand between hundreds of times. Well, now rand between is asking me for two arguments bottom and top here and so I can pass in two numbers to the ran, ran between procedure and you know I hit enter and it gives me a random number between one and a hundred well this is exactly what I'm talking about here I would like to have sort of a general purpose print titles that allowed me to specify what location to put the title in and what would even be better is if I could also pass in a string as to what title I want to put into that location well, we're going to do that this week. The next thing you'll notice in our place random data, again, we've got these values 2 and 11 that are just always going to be the same in this procedure. Also, column 1, it will always be the same in this procedure. And maybe the random values that we have here, notice it's always going to be 1 to 100. Well, maybe we could pass in what we want the random range to be. And the same thing in calc sums. Again, we have the same 2 through 11 and the column 1. And then finally, our answer is going down below the last row. But we could calculate that if we passed in the end row. We could just add 1 to that end row variable to find out what the place was for that sum. So go ahead and watch for that one. But in the meantime, I want you to see if you can write your own sub procedures that would be similar to this, but instead of calculating the sum, calculate the average and put that average on the sheet. So instead of a sum, do an average. And then have another procedure that would say color the below average ones. And so it would have all the looping and color the below average values. It would grab the average off the sheet and then color all the below average. And try a sub procedure for above average. Okay, thanks.